All praises to you, how about Hashem, you have shy. But Hashem, Yeah, I was the name of the Heavenly Father. It means he is. Yeah, have a shy, his name of his son. Mistakenly called Jesus by many. It means he is who saves. Rahakadash is the name of the Holy Spirit in Hebrew. Ephesians six and seven for those who are trying to withstand wickedness. Let's start with uh, uh, from 10, 6 and 10. With, well, from 6 and 7, with goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever is thing, a good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respects of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle, wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. And you should know that... Um, that ain't just the devil with a pitchfork dancing around in hot pants. It's organised. The left-hand side is organised. They have rank and file. They have order. They have levels. You know, so get yourself organised. Get yourself in order. Put your, put your arm on. Put him, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> when they talk about, when they're training those soldiers, right? And the soldiers say, the, the drill sergeant comes to make sure that the, the people know how to keep the guns clean, the turret, is, the, the turret of the gun is clean, the butt is well polished, you know what I mean? The, 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 the shoes got to be polished, the, the trousers on point so that you're ready. Yeah, so the soldiers are ready to go to war because you don't want to be in the middle of war and your pants start falling down. Yeah, so you make sure you're girded up right, yeah, everything's right, right? So this is what, I think it's Paul. He's letter to the Ephesians. He's saying, because we are, we, it ain't like a, a, a rumble. It, it ain't a, it's a war, it's organised, it's military, there's strategies, there's levels, there's generals, there's privates, there's officers. Because it's organised, put get your shit together, man. Get, get your gear, your... <coughs> Not talking, excuse me. Not talking about physical warfare. We're talking about spiritual warfare. So we, you know, get your get your get your gear right. Get your 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 spiritual armor. Make sure it's polished and and sharp, and, and fit for battle. Make sure you you're all kitted out right. That your your shoes are polished. Your laces are tied. Yeah. So we're going to go we'll go back to twelve. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. And you should know that there's spiritual wickedness in the high places. Anybody who lives in London, or maybe in uh, maybe in Vatican City, you can see that these people didn't just decide. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to draw a dragon on the on the you know on these massive doors of the Bank of England, and I'm just going to you know put. Um, gargoyles on the corners of cathedrals is not by chance these are uh, organised you see the, the the masons they are very organised they have got ritual after ritual order after order ordinance after ordinance they have got the ways that things should be done on the left hand side and as, it, and as on the left so on the right so get your, get your stuff in order Paul is saying Wherefore, take unto you the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand, this is verse 13, in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Therefore, that's, that's an interesting one, so like, <laughs> that when the, when the, when things get tough, like when we're talking about evil day, evil always mean like bad times, right? And he says, so you might be able to stand in the evil day. That when things are really hard and difficult, you're able to stand and you're able to continue 
and having done all to stand. That is when you reach the end of it. There's no point getting through, you know, all this hardship and then you and then you get right to the end and you're so exhausted that you drop down dead. No, you have to be able to stand through the evil day and then having done all, when you reach the end of all of that, overcome all that evil, you still have enough strength to continue standing. You're one of the last people left on the field. 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breast, the breastplate of righteousness. So, um, yo, truth, you know, being in the truth, knowing what the truth is, always telling the truth, always representing the truth. Your loins girt about with truth, you know, your gut, literally having, the truth holds your pants up. If you're caught lying, if you're caught, you know, there's no point like, you know, preaching to everybody and then it turns out that you, you're you running around with, you know, all sorts of, doing all sorts of madness behind the scenes, all sorts of prostitutes, all sorts of um, doing all sorts of drugs or whatever, because then the truth will literally make your pants, you can't, you can't walk out with, when ever, you know, and start talking to other people. The, the truth holds you up, the truth holds you together, the truth holds you up, your self state um, guts you gives you the strength to hold your back keep your back straight and having on the breastplate of righteousness uh, righteousness being order being doing the right um doing the right thing being a, being able to have a clear conscience to say that in your heart <coughs> you've done no man any wrong Um, being able to puff your chest out and know that to be proud of who you are and your feet shod in the preparation of the gospel of peace yeah so you're prepared to walk the walk the gospel of peace what is the gospel of peace well the prince of peace is Yahweh Shai and what was his gospel his gospel was that he was the bridegroom and he was he was preparing the way for the marriage, the marriage between Israel and your house Shai, and by uh, uh, and through that marriage, the unification of Israel back to Yahweh. Sixteen above all, taking on the shield of faith, where we ye with, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Yeah, and this came um, up in a. Uh, a question by Taha, you know, like he said, uh, how Shai said to Peter, you are Peter on this rock, I will build my church, you know, and, uh, and, uh, what's it, and the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What does that mean? It means the church is a church with the, built with the walls of faith and the gates of hell, the fiery darts of the wicked cannot penetrate and do note that he said above all because the faith is key you know faith is key there's the parable of the mustard seed you know we can get into that in a minute I jump around a lot so I'm going to stay here for now but it's a rock it's a rock. There's another parable of them that built their ha their houses on sand. But when you build your house on a rock, the house doesn't move anywhere. So understand that the rock is its foundation. Is the foundation by which you are able to continue, or the foundation on which you're able to build yourself up and up and up. Hopefully. And the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, the helmet is either seal on, you know, in the old times, you, you could tell whose side you were on based on your helmet. You had the round heads and the pointy heads or whatever. You could tell by the helmet. The helmet of salvation says, you know, you know what side, who... Who, which side you rep in, basically, for want of a better way of putting it. 
and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Well, is I think it's in Hebrews that says the word of God is a two, you know, it, it is a sword and it, and it seeks out. It, 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 it builds up people, but it can also cut people and it discerns the hearts of men. So it says, look, you speak the, that word, that, that the word of God. And to some people, it will be a balm, it will be a comfort. And to some other people, it will be utter destruction. And the word decides, <laughs> it, seeks, it, it discerns whether it's going to cut you or heal you or comfort you. It discerns the hearts of men. I'll get that in a minute as well. Hmm. But yes, the sword being a weapon, a weapon that you can use against, you know, a, a weapon you can use against uh, in in the spirit, you know, a weapon you can use against uh, temptation or against attack, some kind of attack. Praying always with a prayer with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching there thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That is all praying your praying your all prayer. <laughs> you know, praying your your most sincere prayer, praying with your heart, your most intent prayer and supplication. Humble humility. Let's look up that word supplication. Let me see. Let's have a quick look here. The action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. With all perseverance and supplication. The perseverance is patience. And for me, that the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Yeah, so he's asking for his own ability. To, to be able to put in words the mysteries, to be able to convey the mysteries, knowing that, See, Paul was so wise, man. He knew that it, it didn't come from him. Even as he opens his mouth, he knows that it doesn't come from him. So he's saying, thank you for giving me the utterance. You know, Moses was... said before the Lord that he didn't think he could lead the children of Israel because he wasn't, you know, he wasn't some great orator. orator. And that angered the Lord. He was like, well, who told you it was coming from you in the first place? <laughs> anyway with that I'd like to say Shalom